Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of different average functions in Google Sheets. And so what I've got here is just a table of data that we're going to use to derive averages from. So we'll start at the top with the basic average function and I'll just get that one going. So with the average function, all we need to do is just choose the range that we're going to average. So we can just mouse over there close it off and finish it off. So 561.36 is just the average of each of those. And if I drag that across, it just does the same thing there for each column. So that's fine, that's nice and simple. Next, we're going to have a look at average if, and what we're going to do is we're going to grab averages of the same columns, but only if they have these numbers here in the quantity column. So we'll start off with the first one there first. I'll just get that one going. So what we need to do is we need to pick a criteria range and then the criteria. So that's going to be the range and that's going to be the criteria, the number one. And then we just need to pick the range from which we actually derive the average. So I'll just get the criteria range first and I'm going to lock it into place because we're going to copy and paste this formula around. And then we'll grab our criteria over here and we'll just lock in the column E. And then we want to grab the average range, which is going to be that. And we need to lock in the rows there. So row five and row 25. So that's all good. And we'll just finish that one off. So now we've got a function that says go through and find all of the lines that have a quantity of one and then do an average of the numbers that are in the gross column. So we get a different result there to just our standard average function. We can drag that one down. We can have a look, say here, and we can see there that that's doing it there for the number four when it finds the number four in there and it's just giving us the average. And we can check this one here, number three, because in here we've only got two rows that have the number three and they both have $205.50 there as the number. So obviously the average is also $205.50. So we know that works and we can drag that across now so that it's doing the averages of the fee and the net columns as well based on that criteria over there. So that's that one. Now we'll move down to the average if S and this is the same principle as the average if function, except instead of having one criteria, we've got more than one. So I've set it up with two criteria here, being the quantity and the product being the portable blender. You can have more criteria if you want. I've just got the two there just for this uh, demonstration. So I'll start this one off. So with the ifs, it's basically the same thing, except we just do it the other way around. So we need to put in our range first that we're going to get the answer from, and then we put our criteria in afterwards. So the range is going to be this, and then we need to lock those rows. And now we get the criteria one range, which is the quantity, and we'll totally lock that in and grab the actual criteria over here and lock in the column E and then we just need to get our second criteria range and criteria. So that's the product. We'll lock that one in and the criteria itself. We'll just lock in F there, close it off. And now it's looking up both the quantity and the product columns for the number one and the portable blender and then it's grabbing the values out of the growth column and it's giving us an average of them. So if we just drag that down there, we can see that that's all good for all of them except for the portable blender for three here. And that's because there are no columns with three and portable blender. So there's three in drone camera and three in drone camera and there's no other threes. So it's giving us a div zero because an average is obviously one number divided by another number and if it can't find any of them, then you get a div zero er error. So you can either leave that as is, or you can get rid of that with an if error function. So we'll just drag that one across like that. And that looks like it's working there for all of them. 
So that's average if s, and the final one is average weighted. So I'll just get that one going down here. And as the name suggests, it doesn't just do a simple average of all these numbers down here. It actually weights them based on the quantity. So it'll say that there's two of that and there's four of that instead of just one. So we'll get a different answer to just our simple average. So let's just have a look at what it needs. It needs the values and then the weights. So the values are going to be this column here, which we can leave just like that. And the weights are going to be the quantities over here. And I'll just lock that into place. And we'll finish that off. And it's giving us a value error. Now the reason for that error is that we have some blanks in here. So we can't have that. So we'll just go in and we'll just type zero in there. And we'll type zero in there. And now our function works. So it doesn't like it if there's any blank ones in there. So that's giving us the weighted average there of the gross based on the quantities over there. And as you can see, if I just decrease those decimals just into two decimals so we can compare it a little bit better, we've actually got 784.79 as our weighted average of the gross column, whereas the simple average was lower at 561.36. So you can see you get a different result there. And if I drag that across, once again, we get a different result for each of them. So that's how you do a weighted average, and that's how you do your average, average if, and average if s functions in Google Sheets.